Indian passenger vehicle market is driven by SUVs. But come January, and we'll have a new premium hatchback, which will try to woo a lot of customers in sitting in that premium hatchback subsegment. Uh, to tell us more about this product and the uh, the approach, engineering approach being taken towards developing this product, which is called the Tata Altros in a brand new platform. Uh, we have with us Mr. Rajendra Petkar, President and CTO of Tata Motors. Mr. Petkar, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. And uh, tell us uh, the first model on the Alpha platform, right? Uh, so briefly, could you tell us uh, how was the journey in terms of uh, preparing this, how long did it take you? and what were the challenges and how did you address them? And what were the three if, key objectives, if I were to ask you, for this as a target? Yeah, so we started uh, about five to six years back. We knew that uh, we needed some sort of a platform which can cater to the range of the vehicles in the various segments, right from, say, somewhere between, say, 3.6, 3.7 meter, going up to 4.3 meter. It can be even the mid-size SUV. So we were looking for such, you know, the agile platform which can be lightweight, which can be flexible and which will be a modular and the scalable also. And uh, that's how the Alpha architecture was conceptualized. It's conceptualized in such a manner that it can provide you multiple body style options. It can take various range of the power trains and it's also going to be able to deliver the sort of uh, the safety performance which Tata Motor is very well known for ever since we got the five star on the Tata Nexon. So, if you were to ask me about top three, I would talk about top five. Okay. The first one, of course, comes the safety. We are the uh, leader as far as the safety is concerned, both in the area of the active safety as well as the passive safety. Mm -hmm. And this car is going to be no exception to that. The second important aspect is about the design of the car. And the design, I talk about both the exterior design as well as the interiors of the car. And both are premium in nature, keeping in mind this kind of a discerning customers who fall into the category of the one who would like to have the premium premiumness in terms of the hatchback. The third differentiating factor is about the driving dynamics. And it's all about, you know, whether you get a planted feel of the car, how car is agile, is it able to actually give you confidence when you are turning on the corners and uh, something where, you know, you feel very safe as you drive, even at a very high speed. So this is about the driving dynamics, which is there in the car. The fourth is about the technology. We are offering two powertrain options, one which is gasoline and the second one which is diesel. And uh, both the performance is quite uh, superior in terms of uh, the engine power and the torque, in terms of the linearity that you get on the performance. And both are the basically BS6 compliant uh, powertrains. Then we also have the something unique in this uh, Altros, which is about the cruise control which is about the two drive modes and also about the the one which is uh, related to the uh, I would say uh, you know that feeling of the agile that you get mm -hmm. is you know the sprightly feeling yeah. is something the way the calibration has been tuned. Yeah. So these are the features which basically and beside the one which are related to the powertrain there are more which are related to the infotainment also mm -hmm. and it's something which is unique in this class in terms of having the floating uh, uh, the infotainment uh, system, the biggest in its class. It also has uh, the instrument cluster with the 7 inch TFT screen, which is again the unique in the class with a fantastic resolution that you could actually see the even the small symbols you could easily see on the screen. And the last one and the fifth one is basically related to the, the accommodation and the usage or the customer delight. That means as you enter in the car, first of all you have the 90 degree door openings on all the four doors. You have the flat uh, floor so that there is an easy access. You can move from one seat to other seat very easily. The middle person can find it very comfortable when he sits there on the, on the, on the rear side. Then you also have uh, so many utility spaces, uh, which if I start counting, it could be not less than 20. And these are actually very unique utility spaces, very intelligently thought. So the whole platform, the whole architecture of the Alpha lends itself to actually create this kind of a differentiating features which are not easy to uh, unless they are built into the basic architecture. So you think these are kind of a armory or so to speak for the uh, for the all pros to take on the two formidable competitors you are confident of taking them head on? Obviously yes, obviously yes. Diesel as a fuel is not it's losing favor in the in the market. 
you would seem to be betting on diesel even in BS6 era. What is giving you that confidence? Yeah, so in this category of the car, the diesel still constitutes anywhere between 20% to 30%, which in our opinion is a big size which cannot be ignored. But will it remain in those levels? Number two, the diesel offers you the basically the better performance, fun to drive character. It also provides you the better fuel efficiency, it provides you better carbon dioxide footprint and uh, you know when you are actually complying with the BS6 norms, it's actually the telepipe emissions are as clean as that of a gasoline and of course even though the price is going to be high but in terms of the total cost of the ownership the diesel is going to be still able to make a sort of a significant part of the overall, uh, overall offering to the customer right. and uh, I mean in this category of the customer class, uh, those who actually drive, you know, for a longer distance, I think for them even the diesel is going to be a better option. So we think it's the right thing to do, and uh, that's how we are doing it. Not just for even this car, but even for the other cars. For example, let's say if you go a segment down, let's say uh, Tiago, will the diesel remain for the Tiago, or will, will that segment be? Little? That is the segment which we call it as a compact or the subcompact cars, where actually the equation tilts in favor of a gasoline. Because that class of the customer per day driving or per month driving is not so high. And uh, therefore, uh, the on cost of the diesel with the BS6 especially is something which that's where there is a tipping point. But in this category where, uh, you know, it's a performance based car, you know, people like to drive the car and you have the relatively higher, you know, the monthly coverage for a given car, then that's where the diesel start to score and therefore, we are not saying the diesel is going to be the mainstay. We are not saying it's going to be like 80 percent, 90 percent. But even 20 percent, 30 percent is good. good. And same story, I would guess, for the uh, Nexon also, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. For the auto specifically, uh, this you are future proofing in terms of uh, in terms of your strategy, uh, even as a platform. So this one, in terms of the electrification part. So, can we sometime down the line, can we also expect an electric version of this like you are planning for the Nexon for example? Yes, yes. In fact, if you remember that in Geneva 2019, March, we did showcase uh, the electric version of the Altros. So, that is something that uh, we are working on. Right. And also, in, in terms of your uh, kind of uh, the whole uh, evolution of uh, technologies in the automotive space, how do you see uh, the electrification uh, megatrend panning out in India? So there is no government mandate for the electrification, but government is actually providing a lot of support for the faster electrification in the country. And uh, But if you really were to look at from the consumer point of view, of course there is no consumer demand per se which is coming. But uh, there is going to be one trigger which is there in the way, which is about the cafe norms, which will be implemented from 2022. That would act as a sort of a catalyst. And uh, therefore, the some OEMs could offer the full electric cars, some OEMs could offer the hybrid cars. And uh, I think that is something which the time is going to tell us. But I think we will have the perfect play of all the categories of the technologies as we approach towards the 2022. What is your Tata Motors strategy in, in, in that front, in the electric? Yeah, so we will also go in the direction of the electrification. In fact, we have taken a significant lead as far as the full battery electric vehicles are concerned. And that's something we are betting big on that. And uh, we will also have the other options if there is going to be a market demand. We are still assessing the situation. Right. And also in terms of uh, the, you, have, you, had, you started off the uh, product product uh, journey on the Omega platform with the Harrier <coughs> and the Alpha with the uh, Altros. At what, what is the kind of run rate you would like to have in terms of new offerings on both these platforms? Yeah, so between the Alpha architecture and the Omega architecture in the fullness of the thing we will have seven to eight products. And uh, each? No, both put together both put and uh, both put together with the seven to eight products we should be able to cover about say 80 to 90 percent of the market. Now, at what periodicity we will come, of course, this is the first manifestation as far as the Alpha is concerned. Mm -hmm. On the Omega, we already had the Harrier and there is a range of the products which are in the pipeline. You would have heard about the Gravitas, which would be the next product as far as the Omega architecture is concerned. And there is going to be a follow on even on, even on the Alpha architecture. And to me, when we talk about the, uh, you know, the new, new products or the new variants, the variants can be in the form of a body style, it can be in the form of a powertrain options, it can be through the upgrades on the infotainment 
or it can be a mid cycle enhancement it can be something like a minor face lift which we keep doing so i think you can expect that with the flexibility which is offered by these two architectures we would be able to you know deliver more products in the in the short period of time address um, the market and address the, up to 90% of the market yes address the bigger part of the market on the larger level what what the timeline you look at towards that see as i am saying with all these options which are possible with through the power train including the electrification with the body style i think we are looking at maybe 3 years 3 years kind of a time frame on that note uh, thank you very much uh, for talking to us thank Mr. you Victor, and uh, wish you all the best for this project thank you thank you and uh, thank you very much for watching this interview with mr rajin petkar president and ceo of tata motors do keep following us on our uh, website www.autocar.co.in as well as our uh, social media channels and of course on this uh, youtube channel of ours do subscribe to the channel to get keep getting all updates and uh, news about all developments in the indian and the global automotive industry thank you very much for watching goodbye